If we examine the heritage list, we will very quickly find out that out of the 14 listed articles, only about five of them are exclusively or primarily in the horror genre, those being 087, 093, 231, 701, and 882. The remaining articles fall mostly in the genre of contemporary, which is often referred to as urban, fantasy, with some of those having elements of horror sprinkled in. Contemporary fantasy is characterized by a world that is much like ours, with the exception of having supernatural elements. Sound familiar? It should, because that's the SCP Foundation in a nutshell. The genre is often called urban fantasy, but that is too specific for our use here since plenty of SCPs have settings beyond cityscapes. Despite this, most people, if pressed on the issue, would call the SCP Foundation a horror website. This perception colors our writing in a way that can really harm our ability to tell a coherent story. Not every idea you have is going to serve as a platform for a horror story. If you have an idea for an object but then think, this isn't scary enough, let's make it more dangerous, you've fallen into that trap of genre. Not to mention that old adage of just because something is more dangerous doesn't mean it's scarier. The things that scare you most are deeply intimate and personal, and they speak to who you are as a person. Some people, given a choice between speaking to a crowd of 20 people and an axe-wielding murderer, would choose the axe-wielding murderer. Understanding the psychology of that can help you write better horror fiction. But the nuance here is important. An article can have more than one genre. To better understand this, we can talk about the superhero genre in modern cinema. More than half of the best superhero movies of the last four years have had a primary genre that was different than superhero. Let's take a short glance at a less than comprehensive list to make my point. Ant-Man is a heist movie. Winter Soldier is a spy thriller. Guardians of the Galaxy is a space opera. Spider-Man Homecoming is a coming-of-age film. Thor Ragnarok is an 80s buddy cop movie. Yes, really. Deadpool is a comedy. Logan is a western. I could keep going, but I'm not going to. The point is that those movies didn't restrict themselves to only the conventions of the superhero genre, and they were better for it. Part of that is that the superhero genre is still fairly simplistic on its own, so bringing in other genres helps fill out the story in unexpected ways, and it's especially true for new entries in an established line of movies, and especially useful in sequels. But when writing for the wiki, understanding your genre will help you know what you can emulate that works, and what you should avoid because it's been done a billion times before. But on the flip side, understanding genre also means you know a number of tricks and genre conventions that will make writing much easier for you because you know how this sort of story has gone before. And even if you subvert expectations, it will help you to know what those expectations are. And as you accumulate experience, it will help you to understand if you're good at a particular genre. Maybe you're just better at writing science fiction. If you're having trouble finding a new idea in contemporary fantasy or horror, embrace that. Finally though, it narrows the selection of articles and outside fiction you use as inspiration. If you're a fan of Star Trek, you can use that knowledge and love to craft a completely new science fiction story set in the SCP universe while referencing some of the tropes and convention used in that series. Or maybe you love Stephen King's works, and your better understanding of horror can help you understand and craft a truly unsettling story. The important part is to understand early on what your genre is, and once you do, you'll find it much easier to finish your work. That's all. If you liked it, please hit the subscribe button and follow me on the tweeters. Thanks for watching.